Remember your Old Testament, Blackie? We're gonna need it today. We observe today, not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God the same solemn oath our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. The world is very different now for man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. And yet, the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that rights of man come not from the generosity of the state but from the hand of God. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. This much we pledge and more. We dare not forget today that we are the heirs of the first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. Born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of the human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today, at home and around the world. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe, to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Can we forge against these enemies a grand and global alliance, north and south, east and west, that can assure a more fruitful life for all mankind? Will you join in that historic effort? In your hands, my fellow citizens, more than mine, will rest the final success or failure of our course. Since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. The graves of young Americans who answer the call to service around the globe. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need. Not as a call to battle, though when battled we are but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of mind, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, 
ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Finally, whether you are citizens of America or citizens of the world, ask of us here the same high standard of strength and sacrifice which we ask of you. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history, the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessings and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. You've seen the rest, but why not the best? After two years of pandemic crisis and emerging military contingencies in Eastern Europe, the times demand proven leadership and experience. But even Dr. Rochelle Walensky has said that over the past two years, human choices have not served Americans well. You've seen the rest, but why not the best? Major Mike Webb for U.S. Congress. Nobody else has the resume. And failure, this time, is not an option. Mr. President, we must not allow a mind shaft gap. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb. I am told what we will hear on this end is a sharp, shrill sound. That will be the ambassador's phone melted.